Hello and welcome back to Peaky Board Gamer. My name is Hector Rakos and in today's video I will teach you how to play the game Free Ride. This is the German name and I will not fall into the trap of trying to pronounce it. This is another game by Friedman Friese that I would recommend as a great family game for 1-5 to five players that plays in about an hour. The game is obviously about trains but we will see the rest on our board gaming table. Let's start! Free Ride is a game of trains that splits to three periods. During the game, players will have to execute travel routes using their train. Players will be constantly trying to reach the destination city of their travel route and then move to the next starting city to pick up the next passenger. Trains, however, can only move on a constructed railway network. So on the other hand, players will be trying to construct rails that connect cities. When moving their trains, if players use railway links owned by other players, they need to pay a cost. At the end of the third period, players will gain victory points depending on the travel routes they have managed to complete. The player with the most victory points will be the winner of free ride. At first, place the board in the middle of the table. Create a supply with the rail pieces and the coins next to the board. Nine of the surrounding cities depict two coins next to their icons. You need to place two coins to each one of these cities from the general supply. Players then select one of the colors and take the three player mats, a train and two coaches, the ownership pieces, the train and the under construction token of their corresponding color. Players also start the game with six coins which they take from the general supply and depending on the number of players in the game, players start the game with a certain number of rail pieces. In my example of a three players game, each player starts with 12 rail pieces. Players place their train mat on the level 1 side and also the level 1 coach next to each other. Players will place their level 2 coach as well as their under construction tokens next to the board. Separate the city cards to three stacks according to their back illustration. If this is a two player game, then you need to find and remove all city cards that depict these symbols. In my three player game, I will need all cards. After you shuffle the cards, place them next to the board. Using the first city card stack, place the top three cards one next to the other at this space next to the board. Repeat this step two more times. Select a player at random to be the starting player and give that player this token and the game is now ready to start. The game starts with a prologue phase during which each player will take one of the available travel routes. Players will also be acquiring other travel routes during the game, so let's see what's the basic concept behind these travel routes. Whenever players take one of the sets, they'll be removing any one of these cards from the game. Then, without changing the order of cards, the top city will be the starting city of the travel route and the bottom one will be the destination city. To clarify more, the top city can never be the destination city of the travel route and the bottom city may never be the starting city of the travel route. So, in the prologue, starting with the first player and then in a clockwise order, each player will select one travel route using the following steps. The active player selects one of the city card sets and then removes one of the cards from the game. By doing so, the player has just specified the travel route. The starting city is Bordeaux and the player places his train onto that city. If the city has any coins next to it, the player also collects these coins. Then the player takes the two cards and places them on top of their coach with the destination city on top. As a last step, the player creates two new city card sets to be available for the next player. So the next player has more available sets to choose from. In a two-player game only, after the first player selects the travel route, he adds three new sets instead of two. So Prologue continues the same way. The second player will choose one of the sets, discard one of the cards, place the train to the starting city, bring the cards to the coach, create two more sets, and so on and so forth, until all players have their starting travel route. Last but not least, after the last player takes a travel route, if you have less than six, you need to add more travel routes so the game begins with six. So after Prologue, players have already picked their first passenger, 
which needs to be delivered in the city which stands on top of their coach. And since players only have one coach, they need to deliver the first passenger first before picking up a next passenger. So the blue player, for example, must somehow bring their train to Istanbul to empty their coach and get another passenger. In the main game, starting with the first player and continuing in clockwise order, players take turns and on their turn they have two main options. The first option is to construct rails that connect cities. Their second option is to move their train over rail-connected cities so that they reach their destination. Let's see these actions now in greater detail using an example of a mid-game situation. With the Build Rails action, and as it's depicted in the top part of the player's train mat, the player gains two construction points to build rails on the board that will come from the player's personal supply. He takes one construction point to add one rail to a normal space, but two construction points to build a rail on a tunnel or on a ferry space. Players may build rails onto any empty rail space if their train can move to that space by moving over already built rails of any player. So the blue player could construct a rail to any rail space I show you in the graphics. Let's say the blue player selects to build here. Whenever players add the first rail in a new rail line, they have to indicate this by placing one of their ownership tokens onto that rail. Now the blue player owns this rail line, which is already complete. We said earlier that tunnels require two construction points to be built. However, if players only have one construction point, they may partially construct such spaces by placing the rail like that. This means that the player must spend an additional construction point in a later turn to complete construction of this rail. Again, this is a new rail line and the player must indicate ownership using one of their tokens. The blue player's turn is now over, however the blue player has started a new rail link which is not complete yet. When that happens, the player must take their rails under construction token and bring it to their personal area. This serves as a reminder that the player must first complete this rail link before starting a new one. Upon completion of the rail link, players return their rails under construction token next to the board again. Last but not least, players may also build rails in spaces of rail links that belong to other players. Of course, ownership of the rail link will remain to the first player. Very important, if at the beginning of the build rails action players have none or only one rail in their personal supply, they can spend a coin to buy five new rails from the general supply and then start constructing. If players do not have the coin or do not wish to spend it, they may spend an entire turn to perform the take rails action and take five rails for free. Again, this separate take rails action requires that players have only one or zero rails at the beginning of their turn. Next we have the action ride the train and as it is also depicted in the bottom part of the player's train mat, with this action players may move the train for up to two cities away. Trains must move through rail links that are completed and not under construction. So the blue train may move next to either Paris or Barcelona, but not to Madrid. There is no cost to move through rail links that are owned by the phasing player. However, to use a rail link owned by another player, the phasing player must pay one coin to that player, otherwise they may not perform that move. Let's say the blue player makes a first move to Paris. After moving through a link that has an ownership token of an opponent player, that token is removed and returns back to that player's stock. This rail link is now regarded to be neutral and can be used by any player without any cost. Of course, for this second movement, the blue player must also pay one coin to the white player for using their links. If a player moves or passes through a city that has two coins, the player collects these two coins. If a player reaches or even passes through a city which is the destination on their coach, then the player has just delivered the passenger. The player takes both of the cards and places them in a face-down stack next to their play area. At the end of the game, the player will score victory points for the cards in this stack. When players have an empty coach, they can grab a new travel route by reaching or passing through a city that can qualify 
as a starting city. And which cities qualify as starting cities? Remember the top two cards on each one of the travel routes. You can see in my graphics the cities that, if reached by the blue train, will grant the player a new travel route. For example, if the player moves the train to Budapest, they can grab this travel route. Budapest will be the starting city, and then the player may choose either Brussels or Milano to be the destination city, and will discard the other card. In another example, if the player moves the train to Odessa, then they can grab this travel route. In this case, Odessa is the middle card and this leaves no further options to the player. Minsk, as a top card, cannot be the destination city, so it needs to be removed. This leaves Prague to be the destination city of the next passenger. Last but not least, we need to point out that players may only take a new travel route while performing a ride the train action. Whenever players take a new travel route, the empty travel route space next to the board is immediately refilled with cards from the current deck. When refilling a new travel route space, if the first stack is depleted, continue as normal using cards from the second stack. When that happens, then at the end of the phasing player's turn, all players pick up their second coach and add it to their train. After this point, all players may take a second travel route. Players may satisfy their travel routes in any order. Likewise, when cards from the third stack start to be used, players flip their train mat. From now on, players may move their train up to three cities when performing the ride the train action. When the third card stack also depletes, the game's end is triggered. After the third stack depletes, the game continues as normal. But now, after a player performs the ride the train action, and only if that player does not take a new travel route during that action, that player may quit the game. And if that player during that last action delivers the last passenger from their coaches, then that player also gains a coin. The rest of the players may continue taking turns, but each time it's again the turn of a player who has already quit, that player receives another coin. And this continues until all players quit the game. Important! At the end of the game, all players must have taken an equal number of turns. So if, for example, the blue player is the last one to quit, the round will continue and the green as well as the white player will also gain a last coin. Now the game moves to scoring. In scoring, players reveal their deck of fulfilled cities. Players score 5 victory points for the first fulfilled card of each city. Then, additional cards of the same cities only score 2 victory points. Finally, players score 3 victory points for each remaining coin in their supply. The player with the most victory points is declared the winner. In case of a tie, the tied player with more different fulfilled cities wins the game. If there is still a tie, then all players share their victory. And that concludes our video for Free Ride Board Game. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, have fun and play more board games.